Uh, I have about five million dollars in stock right now. So, <laughs> yeah, I would say yeah. We can ship you know, pretty much anything you wanted. When you see them in applications, are is someone installing these and using it as a chiller and then a heat pump, like a changeover, or are they using it either or? Typically? Both. All right, HR Expo interview number, I don't know, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Here at the LT booth with Jim Dale, Tony Mormino, Insight Partners and Hobbs. And we're gonna talk about heat pump chillers, something that's pretty popular with all this electrification, getting, decarbonization. Getting very not, popular. Modifications. Very, very popular on both coasts, especially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, surprisingly enough, also in middle America, uh, you know, tenants are coming to the developers and saying, we want this, this, and this. Right. So surprisingly to us, we're getting a lot of play on electrification yeah. in middle America. So. Surprising. Yeah, yeah for sure. Turned out and pretty well. One of the heat pump chillers behind us. So we'll yep. talk a little. So let's talk about chillers and heat pump chillers because I think there's a little bit of confusion out there. All okay. right. So a heat pump chiller can make heating, hot water, and chilled water. That's so right. we can make water temperatures in a very wide range. Right. From 14 degrees to 131 degrees. Right. Right. And so we can do some heating um, on large systems like water source heat pump systems, right. four pipe, school systems, the whole nine yards. And we do a lot of uh, um, um, greenhouses nice. and yeah. industrial work as well. So. so just like your home heat pump, at, in, the, in the summer, it's cooling the inside, it's rejecting the heat outdoors. Exactly. In the winter, it's cooling the outdoors and it's bringing those BTUs inside. Exactly. Kind of the same concept yep. for a heat pump, except yep. you're using water. Water on one side, air on the other air side. Air on the other, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so are you finding these, when you see them in applications, are, is someone installing these and using it as a chiller and then a heat pump, like a changeover, or are they using it either or? Typically? Both. They both. do both? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have a lot that are just cooling. Yep. We have some that are just heating. We're looking at a, a project up in the north area of the country. It's going to be um, a, a very tall building, heating only. They don't gotcha. want to use the cooling. Okay. So, you know, it depends. A lot of uh, developers are finding it difficult to get gas permits for their buildings. That's right, because so, of the decarbonization, exactly. Right. Stuff like so that. that's when we get the phone call. You know, usually from their engineer, and we'll go down. We'll have a talk with them and show right. them what we have, and they're usually pretty impressed. That's nice. Yeah, yeah it's a great machine. Yeah. Cool. So, do we want to take a look at this thing? So, R32 sure. is not. It's common, right? So, this was supposed to be an R32. And for some reason, we ended up with a 410A machine. Gotcha. But the R32 will be here in about a month. Gotcha. It's in production right now, so it'll be shipping out in about about a week or so. Yeah. And uh, then we're going to make both uh, products for probably six or eight months. Until the end, close to the end of the year. Just, yeah. yeah, just so we can do our switch over nicely. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So. so these are... If I remember right, they're kind of modular, right? It's Very this is a 20, 20, 20 ton unit? This is a 20 ton. And usually what we'll do is because they're modular uh, and control, we can control five modules on one backbone and we can do 99 of those in parallel. Right. So the five could be 300 tons wow. and then 99 times. So that's 30,000 ton system. A lot of tons. I'm waiting for somebody to bring that job to me. <laughs> I'd like to get that order. I yeah. might have to come back out of market. Yeah, exactly. For that one. That's awesome. And the coils, uh, is it similar to the VRF products? They're always coated? It's yeah, right? always coated, 10,000 hour salt spray certified. Yeah. So, um, and they're very hydrophilic. They shed the water very easily. Yeah. So, even when they are in defrost, they're getting rid of the ice pretty quick. You know, yeah. Won't build up too bad. The unique thing about this chiller is. Every compressor in it is uh, inverter driven. Nice. And they're all on their own independent refrigerant circuits. So and there's two in here. Two there's tens. two in here. Right. So in the 60 ton, we'd have six of those, right? Great turn down, right? Great turn, not only great turn down, but um, N plus one becomes a lot easier yeah. because if one fails, it's, it has no effect on any of the other circuits right, that continue right. to operate. So you repair it, so it works out very well. And the condenser fans are variable speed as well? Exactly. Right. So my friend sent me a video in Atlanta of a 40-ton unit. It wasn't at full load, it was at part load, but it was running, and you could hear the leaves crunching under his feet, but you could, you could not hear the chiller. It's amazing. It is, it's just like the BRF, it's, you can't even tell they're running yeah. sometimes. So a 60-ton unit will be 72 dBA at five feet. Wow. At 30 feet, which is where most schools will measure them, yeah. it will be 54. 
That is like on an order of eight times quieter. Insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's so cool. Yeah. It's really gone over well. Schools in particular yeah. really like this product. Yeah. Uh, we're starting to do quite a bit of data centers and hospitals. Interesting. Well, because we're all inverter driven, yeah. going on a generator becomes very cost effective for them. For emergency because, mode. Emergency well, we have no starting current. So take a 60 ton. Because you're slowly ramping it up. Right. right. A 60 ton unit will have almost 300 amp starting current, and they have to size a generator for that. We have 29 amps. Wow. We're not going to size it on 29. We probably size it on about 130. So the generator is sized by that Correct. inrush current or starting exactly. amps or right. whatever it's called. Right. So okay. we're going to basically cut the generator and the electrical infrastructure in half. It's nice. Right yeah. And I understand the lead time on these is really good right now. I uh, have about $5 million to stock right now. So, yeah. I would say, yeah. We can ship pretty much anything you wanted. Man, you got some people working on these we things. Do. We, we're, we have a good um, um, ordering system, and they're keeping us in stock. When everybody else is 60 weeks, we can get it there in two. Wow. So, yeah, Insane. For, for a, a time right now where that's not very common. That's, that's right. exactly right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Anything okay, else cool. we need to know about this thing? Or? Oh my God, I could go on forever, but you don't want to get too technical here. <laughs> it's all good. I think you yeah. gave everybody kind of an overview. Heat pump chillers, you know, they're making a scene. You got them. You're selling a lot of them. It's a yeah. great machine. Yeah. I've sold LG for a long time and it's a great product. So, yeah. awesome. Great support. Great. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It. Thanks for all your help. Enjoy the rest of the show. Make sure I look good. That's your job. <laughs>